Namo Buddhaya, this is part 2 of the Buddha's teachings on giving. The part 1, uh, the link is there in the description for the part 1 video. What I am doing in these videos is that I am like on a particular topic like giving, I am like researching all the available sutras that I can find on this topic uh, thanks to websites like sutracentral.net. So, what I have done is that this is the part 2. Uh, all the sutras that I have been able to research, they are also given in the description so you can read those uh, sutras individually if you want to. Right? So, uh, here I will continue with my learning. So, Buddha says, gift of even a little multiplies a thousand times. So, Buddha says, some who have little are happy to provide, while some who have much don't wish to give. An offering given from little is multiplied a thousand times. So, here what my understanding of what Buddha is saying is that it's not about what you give. It's about what is your intention, right? So, if even if you have little and you want to give, that offering gets multiplied a thousand times. So, the reality is that pe there are people who have nothing, but they still happily give whatever le least they can give. And then there are people who have so much, they do not even give from that. Right? So that's the irony. So Buddha says the person who has little and if he gives, that gift will be multiplied thousands of times. So that's such a deep kind of a motivation for all of us that, you know, so you earn 100 rupees or you earn 1000 rupees. You earn 100 rupees, you can give 10 rupees at least. You earn the 1000 rupees, you can give 100 rupees. So important thing is not you if you what you give 1 rupee or 10 rupee but whatever be your situation keep giving keep giving because that will multiply the more kind of stressed financially stressed you are and what you give the impact or the benefit the merit that you get from that is much more so that's why it said that if you don't have money right now if you if you are financially pressed right now that is the time to give because when you give, it's basically you give a signal to your unconscious, to your consciousness expands and it give a signal to your yourself that I have so much money that I can give. That giving expands your consciousness and allows more manifestation, abundance to manifest. Right? So, important is to give even if you have little. Then Buddha says, cultivating an intention to giving is not easy. Right? So it's basically, it's not the giving, how much you give that is, you know, easy or difficult. But it's basically cultivating that intention. That noble intention of giving comes to a very few people, very few people who are blessed. So when we think that we are giving, it's not that we are helping someone else. We are actually helping ourselves. The people who we give, they are basically instruments for receiving they are the instruments in this universe for helping us get the merit, right? So we should not feel that, oh, he is poor person and, you know, such a poor person. It's not that that person is poor. It's basically we are poor. And when we give that to that poor person, that needy person, we are actually gaining merit. We are poor in terms of less merit. And then we gain merit by giving. So that person is basically just an instrument for us to increase our merit. Right? So, Buddha says, giving what's hard to give, doing what's hard to do, the wicked don't li act like this, for the teaching of the good is hard to follow. That's why the virtuous and the wicked have different destinations after leaving this place. The wicked go to hell, while the virtuous are bound to heaven. So, Buddha is saying that teaching of the good, teaching of the Buddha is not easy for, for people to follow. So, People may learn these conceptually, but putting them in practice. You see, what happens is that the the you know the the men, mental patterns of stinginess, kanjusi in Hindi, the word is kanjusi, stinginess, you know miserliness, they come into play. So even if you want to give, at the last moment your mind will prevent you from giving because you think that oh what's the use of giving? Why should I give? You know, will it really help? the person will it really the money will go to the right person is it that the money will you know be siphoned off all these thoughts prevent us from giving 
so we should have a pure intention and we should overcome these tendencies of you know not giving of our mind that holds us from giving right and that is where the we have to exercise our mind we should develop our mind through a regular meditation practice to be in a position to give because only when we give it will give us merit and only when we get the merit it will help us in our spiritual growth and in achieving the nirvana right so buddha says is that that wicked don't give giving what's hard to give doing what's hard to do the wicked don't act like this that's why they go to hell so depending upon what karmas we 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 do we choose our destinations so it's not by accident that we choose the next rebirth where it happens it's all de- decided by the karmic structure that we have as on the time of our death so buddha says do the good deeds like merit is by by uh, doing the charity doing giving is one of the good deeds do the good deeds achieve merit that merit will will take you to that particular place so wicked go to hell and the wise ones go to heaven right so the choice is with us what we want to do okay fulfilling duties towards one family and living a life of righteousness is is a uh, it is a much higher blessing so so buddha says a 100000 people making a thousand sacrifices isn't worth a fraction to one who lives rightly wandering for gleanings means wandering for gleanings means here and there accumulating things for his survival or one who supports their partner from whatever little they have so here this thing is basically uh, relating to blessings that you do donate so much and thousands and you know everything you do that is very little only a fraction of what person who lives rightly whose conduct is right so while buddha praises and you know gives a lot of importance on dan giving right but buddha places the foremost importance to the fact of living a rightful life a rightful life where you support your partner and you live a you know life which is like in accordance with the five precepts or in accordance with the buddha's teaching that is like the highest best thing you can do right so that is what buddha said next is buddha says gift by not breaking the precepts is much more valuable so buddha says some give based on immorality after injuring killing and tormenting such an offering tearful violent in no way equals the value of a moral person's gift so buddha is showing the difference between a moral person's gift and an immoral person's gift a moral person's gift is much more valuable than a immoral person's gift because an immoral person what he does is that he earns income by way of all the wrong acts you know by breaking the five precepts he earns income by killing stealing you know all these things and when he de- in, in earns the money from that his money is tainted by you know those you no know, uh, vices and the gift of that money has a very little significance as compared to a gift by a moral person who lives according in accordance with the five precepts and even that person gives a small a little gift that is much more than you know thousand times gift that is given by a person who is immoral so what my understanding here is that what we need to do is that first our first duty friends is to be is to follow the five precepts if we are in the buddha's path our first duty is to live a rightful life that is in accordance with the five precepts no killing no stealing no sexual misconduct no drinking and right speech right no killing no stealing no lies right speech no sexual misconduct no drinking so ra- five precepts are the base of our practice right when we do that and we do our meditation practice our insight practice when we acquire that kind of a morality that we have acquired through our these practices then whatever little we do the worth of that giving is much more than a person who is immoral and who gives carelessly i am also reminded here of a story that i think it's one i read in one of the books by uh, zen master thich nat han 
is that an emperor asked Bodhidharma. Bodhidharma was the founder of Zen. Zen. So he asked that I have built all these temples and all these structures and I have done all these charity and you know what's the worth of that? So Bodhidharma said zero value. So emperor was confused that you know why you are saying like this? I have done all these such good things. Bodhidharma said that even rather than mindlessly doing all these charities, even by mindfully, you bowl, you wash a dish mindfully, that is worth more than all these mindless charities that you do. So the important thing is, thing is that when we give, we should be mindfully, we should give. We should not be mindless. And first important thing, our most top priority should be being living a mindful life, free from, from defilement, pure conduct. That is the first thing that we need to do. And the giving comes the second. Right? Okay. Fruits of giving in present life. So, Buddha says that you give get the five fruits uh, uh, from the giving in, your, in this life. So, see, when we give, definitely there is some or the other kind of an expectation. It may be like a material expectation that I should get a reward of from my giving or there may be kind of a spiritual expectation that I should you know achieve merit that will further my cause or I should be reborn into higher planes right so Buddha is saying that five fruits you get of out of your giving so Buddha says a giver a donor is dear and beloved to many people right a person who gives person who needs is dear and beloved he gets the love and affection of many people Second, true persons associate with the giver. That means true people who are good, noble, they associate with the giver. So he gets the company of true people. Third, a giver gains a good reputation. So wherever in his society that giver is, a giver gains a good reputation. Fourth, giver enters any kind of assembly bold and assured, whether it's an assembly of aristocrats, Brahmins, householders or ascetics. So he has a kind of internal confidence in himself in his actions. So giver end, enters that kind of an uh, that kind of a state. Fifth, uh, Buddha says, furthermore, when a giver's body breaks up after death, they are reborn in a good place, a heavenly realm. So a good place or a heavenly realm is where Buddha can, where the giver, the person who has given, can continue his spiritual journey, or he may may be born in a human realm with, where he has a uh, you know that much more conducive conditions for his liberation right he may be born in a wealthy family where he doesn't have to worry day to day about earning food you know a lot of people even if they want to be spiritual they want to do their meditation and practices they cannot because there is this pressing need of earning that daily bread that becomes a higher priority as compared to that so in this life if we are able to do our meditation and our practices in this day, in, uh, you know, we should consider ourselves very fortunate. It's our good karmas from our past lives that we are today learning about the teachings of the Buddha and we are following the teachings and we are able to set aside the time for our meditation. So we are very, very blessed being a human, being able to read, listen to the teachings of the Buddha, practice the teachings of the Buddha, it's like we are so, so very fortunate. So we should not waste this life. Right? So these are the, some fruits of giving that Buddha said. Now, gifts of Dhamma. Right? Dhamma is the Buddha's path, the knowledge that Buddha gave, the right living. Right? Buddha says the gift of teaching surmounts all other gifts. The taste of teaching surmounts all other tastes. The joy of teaching surmounts all other joys. The ending of craving surmounts all suffering. It is said to be supreme ultimate gift and the sharing praised by the Buddha. What wise and sensible person, confident in the best of fields, would not sow such a timely gift? So Buddha is actually saying that if you know that some particular seed will give you a lot of good crop, good harvest, then what wise and confident person would not sow the seeds in a fertile field? So that, that way, if the gift of teaching, gift of Dhamma can give us so good benefits, 
why not start spreading the gift of dharma dhamma in whichever way we can to our near and dear ones right let's bring them on the path of knowledge only those who are ready it's not that we should go and you know impose our views on them no it's not that but somewhere or the other we can first live our life in a more moral way and we should cultivate our own peace that inspires people to come and you know ask that you know what we do and then we can slowly spread you know the the teachings of the buddha and you know it's like a spider web and then you know whoever can come and they can stick to it who are ready for these teachings right so that's the point right so 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 buddha says for those who are diligent in the dispensation of the holy one in the dispensation means in the teachings of the holy one both who those who speak and those who listen confident in the dispensation of the holy one such a gift purifies the highest good right so again in this particular discourse what they saying is that the gift of the teaching surmounts all of the gifts like we discussed in part 1 there was this thing gift of the flesh versus gift of the teaching so buddha says always the gift of the teaching surpasses the gift of the flesh right that way okay let me just check okay so i will what i will do is that i will stop here because there are some sutras i will cover the rest in part 3 so uh, thank you so much for watching these videos uh, and and do share your thoughts and reflections from the the discourses that i have discussed in this uh, particular video uh, and watch out for the part 3 thank you so much namo buddhaya namo buddhaya